So, um, as I mentioned, I'm Will, a business development manager at Thrive. And for those that, who may not know, um, as, as a brief introduction to Thrive as a, as a company, there's two main services that we provide. We have a learning experience platform, which is what we're going to be focusing on today and, and showing how great places are, are utilizing our learning experience platform, which is um, sort of kind of a blend between a traditional learning management system and a, and a social learning platform, um, which you can also use for communications within your organization. Um, and Thrive also have a suite of off-the-shelf microlearning modules, which um, come with the platform as well. So um, my journey with Great Places, I guess, it started back in, well, way back in 2019. Um, I was speaking, with, well, I don't think you were there at that time, were you, Naomi, because you're quite new to the organisation. That's it. I've only been here for about between three and four months, so I've probably spent more time at home than I actually have in the office. <laughs> That's a weird way to think about it, isn't it, actually? Yes. <laughs> so I, um, yeah, I initially started speaking to, uh, to Lizzie, um, your head of L&D. Um, so we sort of started discussing um, our learning experience platform. You had a traditional Tatara learning management system when we started conversations. Um, and Lizzie was uh, finding some difficulties with that type of platform, sort of struggling to engage with learners. Um, you were in the process of uh, onboarding quite a few uh, millennials within the organization and, and as a company you wanted to be able to have a, a platform which reflected how learners sort of consume content in their personal lives I guess. Um, so I know you weren't there when we first uh, sort of initially implemented the platform and maybe you weren't part of the decision making process but I do know that when you first started you had the opportunity to use the Tatara learning management system as, a, as an admin or just not as an admin as a learner um, so it'd be interesting to hear your thoughts on what it was like to use a traditional learning management system and then what it's now like using a learning experience platform. Yeah, so when I first started in my first couple of weeks, I did a lot of the e-learning modules on the previous system. Um, and that's basically what it was. It was just an e-learning system. There was no real interaction with it. You just get your e-learning done and then you get off it. Um, but I know that we chose, well, Lizzie chose Thrive and the, the rest of the team chose Thrive because we were looking for something that we could create a knowledge base for colleagues that they could interact with and share. Um, and we wanted something where we could tailor the learning experience to the individuals at great places. We've got such a wide range of roles. We've got repairs, we've got the management training, the leadership training. So we needed something we could um, really ta tailor that experience to. And... Um, we wanted the colleagues to get involved as well. And I think at the time, Thrive was, Thrive was really the only platform where we could get the best of both. We could monitor and tailor the compliance training, but we could also provide that kind of social learning experience too. That's really brilliant. And I, I guess that you, you sort of used that for uh, a number of months until um, this whole situation started. Um, so are you able to tell us a little bit about sort of how you initially used the platform and maybe what was different about uh, what you had to do in light of the, the current circumstances? Yeah, so I was there for the launch. We kind of had a soft launch in February. We planned a bigger launch as well, but with everything that happened, luckily the usage has naturally gone up, so we didn't actually have to do the, the big launch. And... Well, without Thrive, really, it wouldn't have been possible to support our customers in the way, sorry, our colleagues in the way we do. We have a lot of well-being events and we offer well-being support through the study. Um, we also share a lot of resources for working and managing remotely. We have provided our colleagues with some homeschooling materials. And the big success recently has been our onboarding process for new colleagues as part of the partnership program. Um, we recently entered a new partnership with equity so we went from about 610 colleagues to around about 725 so it was a really big increase yeah okay brilliant well let me uh that's actually a good really really good starting point so i, I had a look at the the site beforehand and then the onboarding pathway and there's some really great stuff in there so let me share my screen and we can we can share everybody a bit more about the platform a bit more about the onboarding process so can you see my screen now man? Yeah, I can see that now, yeah. Okay, lovely. Um, right, okie dokie. So, yeah, you mentioned the onboarding process. So, you, you, you've had a new uh, partnership with um, Equity and it's sort of, you've had around about 
an extra 100, 150 or so staff which you needed to onboard. Um, and now within this current situation, you weren't able to do your traditional face-to-face -face, um, onboarding process. So I'm right in saying that you had to develop a, a whole new onboarding pathway from scratch, you know, a, a digital approach, is that right? That's right. So we'd already created a face-to-face -face program. We'd booked the rooms, we had the boards all made up, everything was ready to go. And then of course <laughs> lockdown happened. So we had to completely reconsider the whole thing and take a digital approach to the whole thing. Um, but it was great really. The organisation really came together. We had colleagues who filmed introduction videos and we could edit them and put them online so that new colleagues could put that face to the name. Um, and Thrive let us keep it really interactive as well. So users can comment, um, they can ask us questions, but also it really encourages the peer-to-peer -peer, um, conversations as well with the new colleagues and existing colleagues too. Really? So it was something we really, we put together in probably about two weeks, maybe slightly more, but it was quite a quick process and it was a real team effort. And okay, well, um, yeah, it was great. So from the process, from the, from the moment you said, right, we need to do something different, we need to have something online. It took you around about two weeks to be able to take a whole induction of uh, sort of face-to-face -to, -face to, to digital. That's it. So we kind of reviewed any existing content we already had. We could use some of that and then we created new things as well as a team. Awesome. So, uh, right, let's show everybody the onboarding process then. So um, I've just come to the pin section within the Thrive platform. A really nice feature of the platform is that you can pin different pieces of content and come back to it at, at, at any point you want to really. And I've, uh, I've gone through the platform, I've pinned a load of different stuff that I want to try and pick your brains on. So uh, we'll come down to the um, online induction. This is the right pathway, isn't it? That's the one. Awesome. So this is a pathway of learning within Thrive. So with, with Thrive, for everybody that, that may not be aware, you can uh, push to learners individual pieces of content and, and content can be pretty much anything like, like you'll know, Naomi, that we can show. So whether it's an e-learning course or a video or a PDF, um, but you can also have pathways of learning, which is what this is. Um, and this is just an opportunity to be able to push learners down a particular learning pathway um, in this instance, this is an induction pathway, but as you did, Naomi, you can create pathways yourself. So these could be for sales or for leadership or for, for whatever you want, really. Um, so yeah, why don't you tell us a little bit more about the pathway? Yeah, so I really love the pathway feature because it gives you an opportunity to almost create a library of content. Um, so we started with the introduction and you can see Liz's introduction video there and it just kind of explains a little bit about the pathway and how to use the study as well because it's some people's first time on the study. Brilliant. So it's got nice comments as well. One of the things that was nice were, was that colleagues were commenting and kind of addressing the people who, was on, who were on the video. So Lizzie got some comments saying, nice to meet you. Um, it really promoted that discussion. That's brilliant. So already within the first example, I guess, even if Lizzie didn't do the traditional face-to-face -face induction she may have done, but it's sort of moving it to digital has allowed you to be able to introduce people that you might not have been able to in a face-to-face -face approach and allow these new people to, to meet other people within, within the organisation. Definitely. And we've got different regions as great places. So it kind of allows colleagues to meet people they, they maybe never would have met anyway. Okay, and did you create this video internally yourselves? Did you have that done before or? Um, so Lizzie filmed herself and then I created the video using editing software. Brilliant, cool. So that's uh, an example video. Let's jump back to the pathway and see what else we've got in there. So this is the sort of like the starting sort of just introduction to the pathway, I guess. That's right. And there was um, a video from our chief executive as well, Matt. Oh, brilliant. So, uh, yeah. So again, yeah. you wouldn't be able to come on a face-to-face -face session and, and you've been able to just show that on the, on, on the digital version. That's it. I mean, sometimes he does pop in if he has time, but obviously he's got a lot of other commitments, so he's not always able to do that. So that was a really nice way to introduce the partnership and the induction. Um, on the next section, the getting to know us section, um, colleagues get the chance to meet the rest of the CEO team, which they probably won't get the chance in the induction either because you can't get them all in one place at the same time really with the induction training. So that's a, a nice feature I thought. And it's a really yeah. personal feature as well. For example, one of the videos, um, I think it was Phil, 
it was his first video he'd ever filmed on his phone. So okay. it was a kind of uh, personal note to that, to that. I wonder how many takes it took him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should ask him. <laughs> Brill, so uh, yeah, let's work our way through the, through the rest of the, the pathway. What else have we got on here? So you have got a question there in the middle from Lizzie. We have indeed, yeah. Um, questions were a really useful part of the pathway. So this one, what have you been, what have been your favourite moments and memories whilst working for equity? We wanted this pathway to be a way, not only for our new colleagues to see what great places is like, but we want to learn a bit about what equity is like as well was like. Um, so it gave new colleagues a chance to tell us about all the good things that had happened recently. So we've got a few, a few interactions there. Yeah, that's really great. So again, even though it's online, you, you have the ability or learners have the ability to be able to go through this process, this onboarding process, almost together. There's an area where people can communicate with one another. So it's not a, a singular process for them all. That's right. I feel like I've got to know a few people actually just through the pathways, just through them commenting on the content. Yeah, that's brilliant. And there's, well, 73 responses and there was around about 100, you said, that was onboarded. So there's, there's loads there, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Okay. So we're on vi our vision for the future. So is this, I guess, to, to, let, to let your new onboardees know what, what the plans are for the future of, of the, the, the new company that they, they work for, I guess? That's it. So we've got everything about our values and the vision and the plan for the next 10 years as well. So there's lots of different pieces of information there so they can get up to date with all that. Brilliant. So the great people section, that is the the department's within people and culture. So there's an introduction video from me about learning and development. Then we have an HR video as well, something about the apprenticeships. Um, so it's a real mixture of content. Some, so the apprenticeship video that was existing content that was really useful for this pathway. Is that this um, one here? Yeah, that's that one. Okay, so that was already created. That was on, on YouTube. So you just dragged that that's in from right. there. Yeah. Yeah, it's Great. really easy to just put a link from YouTube in and add it to the pathway. That's brilliant. Okay, cool. And we've got some links in here. We've got some more videos. That's so there's it. different types of content for, for all the learners as well. Yeah, we've got the mandatory e-learning as well in colleague compliance. Um, okay. So colleagues have it all in one place. Brilliant. We'll have a look at that in a, in a sec. That'll be really cool. Um, so then, yeah, it keeps on going through about great communities. Um, if you tell us a bit more about, about these bits, that'd be brilliant. Yeah, so the great communities, that was nice because you get a chance to hear some of the customer so stories. Okay. There's some videos of success stories from our customers. Um, I thought that was a really nice personal touch. Again, existing videos that we could include within the pathway. Um, and a chance just to get to know the other departments and what we do within the communities as well. So we are a profit for purpose organization and our main role is we provide a lot of services and accommodation for, um, to encourage wellbeing and independence within our communities and with vulnerable people. So it's really nice to hear a bit more about what the organization does. That's great. And also sort of like case studies almost of, of your of your client or not your clients, your the people that the, the new inductees might even be working with. So that's right. Yeah. And even if they're not working with them, it's really nice just to see what the organization is all about. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. And then we've got great homes. We've got great our... homes. Yep. So there's some interesting content there about some of our different offices and buildings. So Park cool. Hill is um, a building of ours in Sheffield and there's a BBC documentary about it. Oh right. Yeah it's um, a piece of post-war architecture. Okay that's cool so mm. you did you put the link to that actual documentary on on the platform? Yeah, so you can watch the documentary through the, the platform yeah. Oh there brilliant. And then a bit more information. Well. Yeah. That's great. And then I noticed earlier you had um, some sort of system guidance as well. So you've got some questions on what you to, to sort of reach out to people again to, to sort of make it a bit more of a two-way thing about 
what people like about the study to maybe get a bit of feedback um, and I noticed there was loads and loads of comments on this one so yeah how did what, what made you come up with this idea to be able to sort of just ask the, ask the question for people not sort of what they like and what they don't like um, well it was really new to us as well we'd only just started using the study and we were really interested interested to see what our colleagues thought of the online induction what they liked about the study um, so it's a bit of a two-way process so they can really get involved in their learning as well so it had a lot of interactivity this question loads of people yeah some yeah, really positive good. comments on there it's nice yeah that's lovely and we've had a couple of questions so um, the first one is how long does it sort of roughly take for your employees to complete this onboarding um, it was there's a, a variety really because there were some really busy colleagues at the time with everything that's going on so some are just finishing it now so they've had a couple of months to do it yeah um, others whizzed through it quite quickly so within a couple of weeks we were say had colleagues saying oh, i've nearly finished it i've just got this to to finish a real variety okay so it's different and mm -hmm. do you think that you'll keep it do you think you've bulked it up a little bit more because of the current situation? Do you think you'll strip it back when things maybe go back to normal, if they are going to go back to normal? How do you think it's going to look in the future? Um, well, the next project actually is to use this online pathway and tailor it to our new starters. So not just the partnership new starters, but any mm. new starters within great places. So that's going to be really easy to do because we can just use the existing pathway. There's a lot of content we can just keep there and anything that we need to edit should be quite easy just to edit and pop back on there so that's Brilliant. the next project probably next week and then I think it kind of gave us the opportunity to revamp the whole thing so there'll be a lot that we'll use going forward even when things if things do get back to normal mm. um, because it's so inclusive it, people don't have to travel all the way to head office to do their induction um they get to like we said before they get to meet more people and find out more about the organization yeah that's really great and you could even have a blend so do a few pieces of learning watch this video and then you can invite them to a face-to-face -face session when we'll show everybody on the on this um, on the call today that you can actually book face-to-face -face or online sessions through the platform as well that's it and we were talking about using the study within the face-to-face -face sessions as well so that people can get used to it they can maybe do a scavenger hunt on there to find information and that would lead into maybe day two being more of an online day or it could be both yeah yeah brilliant awesome we've had another couple of questions so um just briefly so in terms of creating the videos does the system include video editing software um, so it doesn't thrive does allow you to be able to upload um, so either raw content or you can drag it in from the likes of YouTube but it doesn't actually um, include an editing software is there anything that you use in particular Naomi that you might be able to um, well I was just going to mention one thing that thrive do provide and that's the how to study videos there's a lot of how to videos that Georgia from thrive actually created for us so that people um, I know she worked with Lizzie and Lizzie told her anything we might need and Georgia created a video for it. Yeah, um, that's right. So that was really useful. But I use Camtasia editing software. Okay, cool. So yeah, and you can you should use that externally and then use the raw content to upload to the platform. Um, but yeah, you're right. So um, Georgia, your customer success manager. Um, so she uh, created some videos of how people can utilize the platform. So um, it's all the training for the uh, for the end user essentially so how they can use the platform different things that they can use so you can see here you've got how to sign up for an event um, how to report a piece of content um, how to add different pieces of content um, and you've used that as part of the onboarding which is a really good idea actually because it's just sort of I appreciate people will be getting familiar with the site using it but it's always good to have helpful videos and guides of how to do particular stuff that's it it's been really and there's lots of things you wouldn't maybe think about until you've watched those videos. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely right. So, um, and then we've had another couple of questions, sorry. So do you offer residents um, a learning offering via Thrive? Um, residents don't have um, access to Thrive, no. It's just for colleagues at the moment. But we have used the resources from the study. Um, our communications team were doing some different projects we've used the resources from there and passed them on to the communications team so it's a good place to kind of collate 
and keep the resources, then you can easily find them and pass them on. Yeah, that's good. That's a good point. And I guess if 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 it was a sort of future requirement, it's something that we'd be more than happy to explore. Um, we'd be more than capable of setting a separate version of the of the site up for your clients. Um, if uh, for your residents, sorry, um, even if your residents wanted to be part of the same platform, depends on whether or not you want them to be able to see your content. But it's certainly possible to do that as well. So if anybody's interested in discussing that further, I'd be more than happy to. Um, and then just before we move on, I had another question. Um, do you make the modules compulsory or is it sort of down to the individuals uh, to make sure they've, they've completed that? Um, that's the good thing about Thrive really. You can change it, you can tailor the content to the audiences. So there are some compulsory modules. There's the e-learning, the mandatory e-learning. And we've actually set that up with a notification. So when anybody is due a refresher, they'll receive an email notification, tell them which which link they need to go to and when they need to complete it. Brilliant. So some is compulsory, some is just sort of stuff that they can use and now and maybe in the future as well. Yeah. And if you go to the Meet tab, you've got a list of all your completed items. So if you've been looking through, you can just see things that interest you and you've got the whole list of it there. Yeah. So here you've got, this is the, the mandatory content that you need to complete. You can see that there's a little due date there and if that was um, a thing that they need to do every year they'll get another notification in a year's time uh, but this is where typically all the mandatory content is is held um, and then here's a sort of nice little area where you can see all the content that you can complete in as well. Great okay so um, yeah just to, to wrap up the, um, the the onboarding pathway so um, what your, I know you, you didn't, um, I guess you weren't, you weren't at the organization when they did a previous face-to-face, face-to-face um, -face is what I was trying to look for there, face-to-face -face, um, onboarding uh, sort of process, but do you think this is sort of like an improved version? I know you said this is something that you're gonna be utilizing going forward. Um, yeah, do you think this is an improved version of, of what it was when it was face-to-face? -face? So I had the opportunity to go through the um, face to face oh, okay, production actually when I first started. Um, so that was really useful because I could see everything that was existing um, before we went on to the online. So um, I think we were looking for the chance really to update the, the induction anyway. So this has given us that really good chance to do that. So I think we'll definitely be using a lot of the content from this going forward. Awesome. And then on the final bit here of, of the pathway, I've noticed that you've got a couple of, um, well, there's an event here and, and there's a quiz here just as an, a, another piece of final content, um, which leads on nicely to the, second, the next thing I'd love to discuss, uh, which is about different campaigns that you're using within the platform to be able to engage learners. So again, when you have the Tatara Learning Management System, um, your L&D team are really struggling to try and engage with learners and get them to come back to the platform. Um, so yeah, it, it'd be brilliant to, to understand different campaigns that you're using within Thrive to be able to, to engage your learners. Yeah, so we have a really good engagement specialist and she started the great get together. So it's part of the pathway, but it's also open to existing colleagues too. It's every Friday, it's kind of a webinar meetup and colleagues just get together to have a chat. They can bring their kids, they can bring their dogs or cats, <laughs> but all sorts. Um, and it lasts about an hour and it's just really a chat about how everybody's feeling, how the week went, what they're working on at the moment. And it's a really nice chance for everybody to meet virtually or have a catch up with people they already know. And is that the great get together? Sorry, did you say? That's the great get together. Yeah, that's um, the events feature. So we've got quite a few different sessions set up over the upcoming weeks and you can sign up really easily on there. You can link it in with whatever webinar tool you're using. So we use Starleaf, you can create your Starleaf event. You can use the URL and if you paste it in there, once people sign up, they automatically get the, um, the link to the webinar. It's really quick and really easy. And do you think you'll, going forward maybe in the future, do you think you'll integrate that with, uh, or not integrate, but utilize that for face-to-face -face sessions as well when maybe we're all allowed to be back in the office? Yeah, the events. Yeah, we did actually start using the events just before lockdown happened. So we did have a few face-to-face -face sessions that were booked through the study. Um, 
but we'll definitely be using this going forward because it's a really nice place to keep a record of it. You can take attendance as well. Um, and everybody can see what it's all about and what's on offer. Yeah, we're really happy with 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 the with the events functionality within the platform. It's really, um, as you can as you'll probably agree, really easy to be able to set them up and, and get them out there. Whether it's again face to face or online, um, you can see up here you can have related content. You can even link content. So if you wanted learners to have a look at some different type of stuff or different types of content before they join the the face to face or online session, you can do. Um, and this is a brilliant example. So here below, there's 40 comments. So Anybody that is joining at an event, they can sort of tag other people in who they think might be might be joining, and you can start a bit more of a discussion. And again, it just makes it a bit more of a collaborative approach, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's been a really nice way to get colleagues talking to us and to each other as well. Really encourages peer-to-peer -peer interaction. Brilliant. Okay, so um, yeah, going on with the with the subject of campaigns, other stuff that you've been. Um, doing within the platform or pathways that you've been created. Um, one thing I really wanted to, to have a chat today is about a, a campaign which I think you created, Naomi, which is about keeping your kids entertained during lockdown. Um, am I right to bring that up on the screen and show that one? Yeah, yeah that's fine, yeah. So if you could uh, sort of tell us a little bit about where this idea came from and, uh, and, and what it is really. Yeah, so we were really looking for a way we could go beyond corporate responsibility and thinking about what else we could do to support our colleagues. Um, I'm actually from a teaching background. I used to be a Spanish teacher, so I've got quite a lot of teacher friends. Um, so we thought it'd be a nice idea just to pull all the resources and put them in a place that people could use if they were homeschooling their children or just wanting to entertain them, looking for ideas. Um, so I got in touch with a lot of my teacher friends, they sent me lots of different links. We've got educational websites and apps, we've got some exercise videos, we've got how to learn a language, we've got some art materials on there, printable resources, so there's all sorts on there to keep everybody entertained during lockdown. That is, uh, and I had a look through it and it is, it is brilliant and it really shows that both yourself and, and great places in organ, as an organization are sort of going above and beyond in terms of the content that you're supplying to your employees. So yeah, this is loads and loads of really great resources. Like I said, a sort of pathway on how to learn a different language and activities that people can do during the day and even supporting your child's learning. This is all, all stuff that would never be a mandatory thing for a, a sort of a, a traditional company to, to supply to their learners. But yeah, you've really gone above and beyond and created a really, really cool pathway, which I'm sure um, loads of people are using and, and benefiting from and <laughs> printing off stuff to, to give to their, to, to, their, to their kids to keep them entertained. It's a, it's a really great idea. Have you had any feedback from any employees or anything like that with this? Yeah, people found it really useful and they've also provided some resources as well. I think it's on, if you look at the fun, I think it's fun activities. Um, one of our colleagues, there, Bake It, welcome to Bake It. Well. One of our colleagues, their daughter's actually started a YouTube channel called Bake It and it just teaches yeah. you how to bake. So she said it was okay for us to put that link on there. It's Lovely. really nice. That's so cool. That's brilliant. And I guess, um, again, keeping the learners coming back into this platform, um, this is something really cool that they can come and, and do and, and interact and learn more about Thrive. Uh, and as they're using this, they might find something else that, that they might want to go and further explore and better themselves from a personal development point of view. So it's sort of, these, are, these tools are really great um, for, for anybody, any organization to be able to just sort of put stuff in the platform, which may not be mandatory, may not be essential, but it's stuff that your learners will enjoy. So it'll keep them coming back to the platform. And then following that, they might want to just go and explore and what, sort of find out what else they can find on the platform. Yeah, it's really nice because you can use the pathways within the pathways. So within that Keeping the Kids Entertained pathway, I added the Learn Spanish pathway, but then I can also use that pathway in another pathway. So you can link everything to different things, like you said, so that if somebody's interested in it, you can pass it on to them. Yeah, that's brilliant. And then when you're in an individual piece of content, so for those, again, that don't know, um, this, is, this is the content page, this is sort of the... the, the the lower level when you go through a pathway so this is the individual piece of content which you can still add loads of comments on if, if there are anybody that wants to but on the right hand side you can have related content as well so 
um, Thrive pretty much works around this tagging system. Um, so when you upload a piece of content, you associate it with some tags. So this is to do with languages, learn something new in homeschool. Um, and when learners first join the platform, they detail skills and interests. And if anybody's displayed an interest in those tags, um, they'll be recommended this piece of content. But what the tags also do, um, look at other pieces of content in the platform that are also tagged with that, and it recommends that type, that sort of different content to learners. So similar to how YouTube works, um, it's starting to sort of push different content to the learners to be able to say, you're looking at this, you might like this, here's something else that you might like. Awesome. So that's the, um, so that's the, the, the uh, yeah. Yeah. Keeping kids entertained pathway, which is is really cool. So, was that your idea, Naomi? Is that something that you came up with? I think Lizzie came up with the idea oh, yeah. of um, starting something where we could have the resources, um, and then I think I just kind of got going with it. And the more people suggested things, the bigger it became. Brilliant! Yeah, it's really cool. I think it started off with just three little blue dots to the pathway but then more and more resources were collected. And it's something I just keep adding to as well as we go. People are still sending me suggestions of what I could put on there. Yeah, and I guess it'll still get used after lockdown. There's loads of helpful resources on there, isn't there? So it can just stay on there. And if anybody wants to go and find it, they can do. Exactly. Great. Um, so there are sort of a couple of great pathways that you use to, to engage your um, learners. Um, so on the front page as well, you've got um, what's called a, a campaign at the top here. So this is an area where you can have a banner and have associated com content um, with a particular subject and you're running one on supporting your well-being at the moment. That's right. So at the moment, it's tailored towards everybody who's either working from home or we also have a lot of colleagues working on the front line. So it's anything we can do really to point colleagues in the way of um, to give them some well-being support um, or maybe some personal development as well while they are working at home. Um, there's lots of different links to helplines and things like that. So it's a really nice way just to keep all the content in a visible place for them. Yeah, that's really great. So as soon as they come onto the site, it's right there in front of them. Um, so for those that, that don't know campaigns, they can be pushed to, to different audiences. So um, Naomi, if you're in a different location to I am, so we as two different learners could get two different campaigns. Um, and it's just an opportunity to be able to show content within a particular date range. Um, so this is a really great idea to be able to support people that are working remotely. Um, other, other clients use this for, for the likes of sort of like um, Mental Health Awareness Week, which I know you've done a campaign on, or a pathway on, so we can have a quick look at that. Um, Learning at Work Week, uh, anything that's sort of going on within your organisation, you can have a nice campaign to be able to have some content to complement it. Um, and again, it's a nice way to show different types of content every time the learner comes onto the platform um, to, again, keep them engaged, keep them coming back um, and sort of making sure they enjoy it when they're on the platform themselves. So here you've got, um, is this, uh, what have we got here? So this is just sort of like a, a post from, from Lizzie all about sort of myths and facts. That's right. I think that was on there from when we first started working from home and there's a lot of different pieces of information flying away around. So it was a really nice way to um, give colleagues the support they needed, but also any kind of up-to-date news as well. Yeah, so it's almost being used as a comms tool as well as a learning tool. So Lizzie's put a sort of big article on there about what sort of myths and do's and don'ts maybe. Um, but yeah, a lot of our clients use just the, the, the video functionality to be able to record the, the CEO giving an update of the organization or that Lizzie can give a really easy video or a document update like that and, and use the platform to be able to communicate with people, um, which many people can't do in this time of sort of isolation. Great. So I mentioned your uh, mental health, um, mental health awareness pathway. Um, that's another campaign that you've, you've used to be able to drive engagement. Is that right? That's right. So we're planning that at the moment and we're going to launch it next week. It's going to be based on the, the five ways to well-being. So we've already got some of the resources up there. So um, one of the one of the ways to well-being is learn. So we're going to link that in with what should have been um, 
learning at work week, but that's been put forward to October now nationwide. Yeah. So we're still linking that in um, and we are pushing out all the resources we already have on there. So I think you've got one there. It's at the self care booklet. I can see that's one of the off the shelf modules that we got from thrive. So it's really, really nice piece of content there, really clear and colorful. So we can share that with our colleagues um, and make sure they know where everything is. They can have recommendations on books. We've got some Ted talks on there so that they've got all their mental health awareness resources in one place. We're also going to do Talent Tuesday. So we're going to arrange some colleague sessions. So if any colleagues have a skill or a talent, they can run a, se a session on that. So we've got one colleague going to do a Reiki session online. I'm going to do a Spanish class as well and colleagues can just sign up through the study for that. Awesome, that's brilliant. How do you come up with all these ideas? You've got so many great ideas and so many great pathways. Is it just is it just you and the L and D team of the sort of like the brainchilds of all these, or? Um, it's a real team effort, really. So we listen to what the colleagues need. We get quite a lot of comments on the study about what they want. We get some emails as well. I think once they know that we're looking for things, they start sending more ideas as well of what they want. Um, and then from there, we kind of have a team discussion. We, we follow current events as well and see what's going on, what kind of learning and development events are going on, but also in the news, what's going on there. Um, and we put everything together in that way. Brilliant. Um, we've had a couple of questions. Um, so how many people are using the study? It looks great. It's a nice little compliment. Yeah. So we've got loads of people using it now. Um, I think the figures were when we first started in February, when we first did the soft launch, the highest amount of users in one day was 183 views per day. And then fast forward to April, we got 1,819 views in a day. Wow. And if you look at the past 30 days, we've had 561 active users. So that's about 90% active coverage within the organization. And in the last 30 days, again, we had 9,017 completions. Wow. Yeah. So you've had a lot of people completing content. Yeah, yeah. Loads of people. It's been really busy on there. That's brilliant. And there's another question that's added to that. So it may have answered it slightly, but what are you doing to, to, to measure, measure the use? Um, so I guess there's, there's, there's loads of functionality within Thrive that you can do to see, see who's been accessing modules, how many people have been accessing the modules. Um, I'm not actually an admin on this page, but if you, if you are an admin, you can go into the individual pieces of content and you can see who has been accessing that, even though it's not a mandatory piece of content. Um, but of course, you've, within the admin functionality, um, you've got all of the reporting tools to be able to see who has or hasn't completed mandatory content. Um, we've got um, graphs that show what pieces of, what types of content are being interacted with most. So you can have a look over the last 30 days as an example, um, whether PDFs or videos have been better received. So that'll give you a better understanding of what your learners are preferring to sort of receive in terms of content. Um, and also within the admin area, it gives sort of statistics, I guess, about how many people have accessed the platform in the last 30 days, how many likes, how many shares and stuff like that. So have you been using the, the admin functionality to keep track of, of all that stuff? Yeah, yeah, it's really quick and easy to use. So like you said, once you're an admin, you can, we've been using it for the online induction to see how it's going down. So we'll look at how many views it's got. We can see, you can look on an individual person as well and see how much of it they have completed um, and pass those details on to them. Um, you could, yeah, like you said, there's the graphs as well. You can see the percentage of people completing things um, and check different groups of people to see what they've been accessing as well. Or you can designate different pieces of learning to different groups of people as well with the audience function. Yeah, brilliant. And that, that leads on quite nicely to the next thing I'd like to discuss. And, and there's also been a question on it. Um, so it's, they've asked, how do you manage training for the gas engineers and the plumbers? Do you send reminders through Thrive um, to the managers or when people have completed content? Um, how, how do you manage that? Um, so at the moment, we are waiting for a new HR system to be um, 
launched so we're using a different system and that will be linked to the study so once they're linked we'll be able to manage it through the study but at the moment we're still sticking to the old spreadsheet that we use and we are using the study to create the events so that they can si sign up to the training events through that and any kind of e-learning they need to do as well. That's brilliant so and I can see on the front page here so you've got um, so just again for those who don't know Thrive, um, the, the way that you sort of deliver content to learners, the main way that you deliver content to learners is probably by the front page. Would you agree, Naomi? Yeah. Um, yeah. So we've shown the campaign at the top hair, at the top there, top hair, at the <laughs> top there. Um, we've got um, this section here, which is called the highlights banner. So this is something that's determined by you. So you determine what sits here. So some of our organization, our clients use this as a communications tool. Um, you've got a, a, a highlight bar about working remotely um, and then everything below this pink line um, is recommended content to that individual learner um, and one of the components you use is the core learning component so the learners can come into the platform and they can see right I've got I mean I recently joined this site as a learner so I can see that I've got loads of mandatory content that I need to complete but it's right there in front of them um, as soon as they join um, and that is again, in, in answer to the, to the question, that is specific content for me as an individual. So it's not just company wide mandatory content. If I was, uh, if I was a plumber and I've got plumber specific uh, content that I need to complete because of my job role, that will get pushed to me. And um, it's very easy for managers to see as well. They can check, um, they can designate learning, but they can also see who needs to do the e-learning as well. Yeah, that's exactly right. So um, Lizzie from the L&D team at uh, Great Places has kindly just sent me a quick message to say that she's made me an admin. But unfortunately, I've refreshed the page and it's not coming up. But thank you for that, Lizzie. It's a great effort. Thank you so much. But yeah, if, if you were an admin or if you were a manager, uh, managers have the ability to see their team members and they can see all of the mandatory content that they've got to do and what they've got completed. Um, and uh, managers also get something sent to them which is called a, a weekly digest so that just gives them an overview of, um, of what their team have been doing in that week in terms of content mandatory content so they get an automated report sent to them about what they have done or maybe more importantly what they haven't done cool so is this the main area where you push your mandatory learning Naomi yeah, so we use it there, but also we use the me function a lot. We will direct colleagues to that so they'll be able to see what they need to do and when they need to do it by. So they've got the personal le personalised learning plan there. Um, we also use the share function a lot. So I use it all the time if I see things um, a colleague needs to do or maybe something that would interest them. Um, you can just share it with them, but colleagues can do that by themselves as well they can share it with other people if they see something that might interest them or if somebody can't find something I don't know why they won't be able to but if they can't they can share it with them. Yeah the share function is really strong so it just allows people to be able to extend the reach of, of individual pieces of content so if I liked something and I, I knew you were going to like it as well I can really easily either come to the share section and, and share that with you via here and I can put a little message and notify you about that um, or I could come into the comments, I could add you in it and, and sort of start a conversation in there as well. So, um, yeah, I'm it's, it's, uh, not surprised that you're using that functionality because it's really cool. Okay, so um, we've got uh, another question at the top here. So, how did the transition go from Tatara and did you manage to sort of take all of your information across from Thrive? Um, I'm happy to answer that, Naomi, if you didn't have much experience in the actual process. Um, I know it's an ongoing process, but it's probably best if you answer that one, yeah. Yeah, no, that's fine. So we actually have a Tatara, or a learning management system migration tool. So anybody that's currently using Tatara or maybe a traditional um, LMS, we have a migration tool, which is um, a free service, which is just part of the implementation process. Um, when we set up your new site, so when we set up the study as an example, we use the tool uh, to buy, be able to migrate everything um, seamlessly across from your previous platform. In this case, it was Tatara. Um, we moved it all across seamlessly um, into the new platform. So that's completions, all of the content, any data that uh, anybody wants to be able to move across to the, the new platform, um, you can do. Um, and that's just sort of free as part of our implementation process. Um, and then, yeah, you're exactly right. So 
data is an ongoing process. So when you have the when we are able to integrate with your new HR platform, Naomi, uh, we'll be able to get all of the great user data off there and, and have an integration between the two platforms so they can speak to one another. Um, and and using the um, audience functionality, you can put different learners into different audiences, um, and they can be pushed that content to making sure that the, the experience that they 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 have is is a personalised one for them. Cool. Um, okay, so is there anything else that you'd be keen to be able to show people of, of what you've been doing? I've pinned a few stuff, so we can jump back into here to, to see um, what I've pinned and what we can show people on here, unless there's anything off the top of your head you can think of, Naomi? Um, we put together a personal development pathway so that if anybody had any extra time, um, also it's appraisal time at the moment, so if anybody wanted to look for inspiration, they can find online courses. Is that this um, one here? That's that one there, yeah. Okay, let's have a jump into that. So that's from a variety of sources. Some of it's using FutureLearn. They've got some free online courses. We've got some of your off-the-shelf content as well. There's a leadership e-learning module in there. Let's have a quick look at that one. Is that this one here, I think? Yeah, that's the one. Brilliant. So you've used this. I'll just mute that so it doesn't distract so okay brilliant so you're using different types of content so this is an e-learning example from our suite of micro learning modules um, so again for those who don't know drive have got um, a catalog of around about 130 modules now um, so this is a leadership example we've got uh, mental health awareness well-being uh, management digital skills we actually created a module on a, a bundle on remote working um, so there's loads of resources which again just come free with the platform um, and you've been able to integrate that with within a, a leadership pathway which is really cool. Yeah there's loads of different resources on um, the off-the-shelf content so it's been really useful just to add it in to existing pathways. Yeah that's really brilliant and yeah I guess it's and then when it's on the platform it's just there for learners to be able to go and find and explore um, if they're interested in that so again the differences between a learning experience platform and a traditional learning platform, a learning management system typically just pushes content to learners and learners just have to, to wait to receive that. But the great thing with the LXP and, and your platform in particular, it's an area where you can just host stuff. And if people are interested in subjects like leadership, uh, people can just come on there and find the content that they're interested in and go and further explore those subjects. That's it. You can easily search with the search box, even just with one word and you'll get a variety of resources there which will lead you to pathways or just articles. So that's a nice function as well. Yeah, that's, that's a good point actually. So yeah, if I've, I've just searched for leadership there. Um, so that's search for all people and all content within the platform. Um, so Thrive not only likes to connect people with content, but people with people. And these are all people within your organization. Conscious I said people a lot of times in that sentence there. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so these, these guys, I've changed that to guys, um, have uh, displayed uh, their, their skill in leadership. Um, I've displayed an interest in leadership, that's why I'm searching for it, and, and I can go onto these people's profile, have a look at some of the content that they've been contributing and find out their email address. If I wanted to reach out to them, I could do. And so that's an opportunity to be able to go and sort of speak to someone that you may never have spoken to before in your organization. And then you can see all of the different types of content. So you can see that Anders Pink here that's been dragged through. So, um, and also some Get Abstract content. So Thrive, there's some two other integrations that we've done. Uh, so we've partnered with Get Abstract and also Anders Pink, and we've done a really great integration with these two content providers. Um, so we can seamlessly integrate that content within the platform um, as just an extra type of content that you can utilize and again, engage and bring your learners back to the platform. We've used quite a lot of that in the working remotely and leading remotely section as well. That was really useful because as soon as we all had to work from home and it was lockdown, resources just popped up on there that we could link with the resources. That's brilliant. Is that at the top here? Um, yes, I think I sent you a link to it. So maybe you've got it pinned. If you keep going across, you should be able to see it. Yeah. Um, I'll have a look in here in the pins. I must have pinned it. Managing remotely. Yeah, that's that the one. one. That's it, articles, tips and guides. Oh, brilliant. 
So you've got a video at the top there. You've got links to Anders Pink and also Get Abstract. Mm -hmm. You've got a video, uh, an article created by Lizzie. You've got another Get Abstract and Anders Pink content. So again, it's just another form of content to keep the site populated. Um, and, and, and in the back end, um, again, for, for those that are watching, within the back end, if you're an admin, you can um, use all the auto curation tool that Thrive offers. So um, it allows you to search for a provider, so Get Abstract or Anders Pink, and then you can search for different subjects within that. So as Get Abstract, for example, they've got uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of books available. So you can search for leadership content, for example, and that will automatically drag all of the content that I get abstract have on leadership within to the platform. Um, you choose what that's tagged with as soon as it's pushed into the platform. And then those tags, um, as I mentioned earlier, that then is used to recommend the content to those that are interested in the tags. Okay, so um, I'm conscious of, of time. We're nearly, uh, we're just gone 10 to. Um, so there's a couple more questions, if that's okay, Naomi, to, to answer. Um, so uh, the first one is, do you sell the e-learning catalog separately too? Which is, yes, we do. Um, so the, the catalog comes free with the platform, but if anybody wants to purchase the, the catalog separately, it's just a price of five, 5,000 pounds per annum. Um, that gets uh, um, access to all of the current and future titles. We've got around about 130 titles um, and there's no restriction on how many users you have or how many times it's used. We provide you with the SCORM files and you can upload those to your learning platforms as well. Um, okay, so um, yeah, it'd be interesting to also understand, Naomi, any feedback that you've had of um, sort of maybe from the learners or even the admin team or any type of feedback that you've had on the platform at all? Yeah, well, we've had lots of emails saying how, um, so one person, my favorite one was said, it was very slick and colorful. Um, <laughs> they'd previously been using the old LMS to do their e-learning. So they would just finish it, finished doing um, the refresher on the study. So they really enjoyed the change from doing it in the previous one to doing it on this one. Um, if you look at a question we posted on there, there's loads of really nice comments on there. It was on the um, it was on the on online induction one, and it was okay. what do you like most about the study? Uh, where's that one? So uh, if you go down to, um, let me see. I think it's in systems guidance. Systems guidance. Yeah. What do you like most about the study? Okay, so you've actually posted the question out there to get feedback. That's right, yeah. So we had some really nice comments on there. What's not to like? Great tool, easy to get around and full of very, very useful information slash hints and tips and videos. It's as if we've, we've planted that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. So you put a question out there. Um, and allowed the learners to be able to sort of give you feedback and contribute to the actual development of their learning and development process. Exactly, because it's new for them, but it's also new for us. It's really nice to see what they thought about how we were using it. And there's so many interactions there, 65 responses, so that's really great. Cool. And um, a, a good question is about um, in this current situation, unfortunately, there's, there's a lot of people that may have been furloughed in organizations. There, there was an initial query about whether or not people could access learning content whilst they are furloughed. Um, I believe that the answer is, is that they, they can, as long as it's not sort of mandatory content, it's stuff that they can just do to, to sort of develop themselves. So um, have you allowed people that have been furloughed to be able to access this? Yeah, definitely. They've still got access to the study. Um, they still attend the wellbeing events as well. So we have people turn up to the great get together on a Friday. Um, if they've got any time, they can use the personal development pathway as well to use the online courses. Um, we had, yeah, the, the sessions are all open to people. So anything they want to do, um, as long as it's not making the organization money, they can do. Brilliant. And again, it's all of the helpful stuff that you've been you, you've been putting on there. It's again all the 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 how to keep your kids entertained. I'm sure anybody that's been furloughed has, has used that and, and benefited from it. So it's really great that another way that you're showing that your organisation is going above and beyond of supporting your employees and then having this available to them if they have been furloughed. I guess also being able to um, 
not just communicate with them, but sort of make them feel uh, like they're still part of the team and they're not on their own um, and that everybody's sort of going through a similar situation. Yeah, that was really important for us as well to make sure they were still a part of great places. Mm. That's really important. Okay, cool. Well, if anybody's got any more questions, please feel free to, to ask. We've still got a few minutes, more than happy to, to answer any. Um, I guess uh, it'd be also interesting for, for me to understand, Naomi, if you've got um, what the next plans that you've got for, for the study and, and for Great Places. I know that uh, the future is a little bit misty at the moment, but what are your short-term plans with the, with the site? So at the moment, we're building a careers pathway. So that's for anybody who, maybe for our grads, for our apprentices, um, we've got loads of different tips on there, things like CV writing and interview tips. Um, we've, as I said before, we've got the Mental Health Awareness Week coming up. So we'll have loads of different content and events on there. In summer, we'll be using it for our summer wellbeing feature. Um, so that will probably be something that colleagues can sign up to lots of different events. They can hold their own events as well. Um, and we'll just put lots of features on there that they can use for that. Um, and yeah, so I think next week we'll start to change the online induction program so that it can be used for new starters as well as the partnership. Brilliant. That's really cool. Um, and I guess in terms of the, the platform itself, what's, what's next, the, the, the main big thing that, that we're working on at the moment is um, CPD functionality. So being able to track CPD within the platform. So as learners and also the content that I'm completing uh, towards my CPD points. So that's a, I guess that's the, the, the main big thing that Thrive are working on at the moment. But um, yeah, we're just sort of really glad to be able to have lots of great organizations that are using um, Thrive at the minute and, and for studies, definitely an outstanding version of, of, of the platform. And you've done an unbelievable um, unbelievable job with it, Naomi. Thank you. Um, okay, um, any more questions, please feel free to, to post them in the chat. Um, just to, to round up before that, the, the, the session today will be recorded. So um, we'll be able to send that out to everybody that's attended today. So you're more than welcome to use that internally um, and, and share that with any colleagues that you have, uh, that you, you might have in the industry. Um, in the meantime, if, you, if you've got any more questions, you're welcome to send us an email. Um, you can get us on hello at thrivelearning.com um, or you're welcome to reach out to me directly. Uh, my email is will.tause, that's T-O-W-S-E, at thrivelearning.com. Um, feel free to, to ask any questions uh, later on. Um, but I think just quickly looking at the questions, I think that might be it, Naomi. So um, is there anything else from, from you at all? I'd just like to say it's been a real team effort and I think the study made it really easy for all our members of the team to get involved. Um, and it was really nice to get friends and family involved as well. If I say I'm working on something, people, colleagues send me information, even my mum sends me some, some resources every day by email. So. I just thought it's a really nice way to get the team involved. Everybody's worked really hard on it. Brilliant. I'm really glad to hear. Well, someone just sent a message saying thank you for sharing your experience. So yeah, more than more than happy. I'm sure you're you're um, you're the same, Naomi. Um, and you guys have been great as well. Um, we've had a lot of contact with yourselves. You've been helping us get it set up and get started. So that's been really good. A two-way conversation. You're too kind. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, well, look, thank you so much for taking the time today. Really appreciate it. It was brilliant to be able to showcase um, all of the great stuff that you're doing. I'm sure loads of people have benefited from that and they might be able to steal a few, few things. Um, and yeah, thanks again. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you, everybody. And I uh, hope you have a lovely afternoon.